Welcome to Cooking with Cooking with Marianne and Ginger and Ginger and Cooking and I don't know why. Whatever. So I'm making stuffing today. Yada yada. We're gonna do uh, some Hawaiian sweet bread for it because who doesn't like Hawaiian sweet bread? And I'm gonna taste test it. Yep, that's good. We're gonna rip them up into pieces about yay big, and they can be. You know, they, some can be a little bigger, some can be a little smaller, because you need that variation in stuffing. You don't want anything getting too soggy and wet, but you also don't want anything too dry. When I do this for Thanksgiving, a lot of times I like to um, do this a couple hours ahead of time and let it dry out a little bit more, because I like that crunchy crisp on the top, but you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. This variation I'm doing is just a very simple, basic stuffing mix. If you like to add sausage to yours, if you like to add bacon to yours, if you like to add turkey drippings to yours, by all means go for it. This is just one simple variation that doesn't take a lot of time, especially on Thanksgiving when you have a lot of other things going on. This is the part that might take a minute. I actually didn't realize that Hawaiian rolls came in savory as well. And in my haste for Thanksgiving, I grabbed the savory rolls and made stuffing out of that. They're still good, but I really like the sweet ones. It's just a little bit more, a little bit more moisture and uh, of course sweeter. Who can resist that? Now you can use Parker House Rolls, you can use whatever you want to do really. This is just how I like to do it. I just want to show you how simple it is. I mean, your, your teenagers can do this. Easy peasy. It's fun for the kids to rip it up too. Give them, give them a job to do so they're not going crazy. If you want to tear this up into pieces and put it in a bowl first so that you can mix everything and then stick it in your pan. You can do that. I just, I'm weird. I like to put it in the pan first to make sure I know exactly where everything's going to fit. Sometimes I mix it in the pan itself. Sometimes I take it back out, but depending on the rolls that I choose, uh, sometimes, or the pan that I'm using, sometimes I've got a couple that are a little wider and it fits a little bit more. You don't want to have it too big so it's overflowing or too less so you're like where did I where did I go wrong you want you want to make sure that it fits the right amount all right I think I'm gonna stop there on that one and get to chopping we're gonna grab our uh, mutilated onion out <laughs> this one had a bad day <laughs> onion. This is called onion, people. <laughs> Alright, I've got two stalks of celery. I'm gonna cut the ends off. Feed that to the chickens, because they love that. Cut the tips off, because nobody likes that. I like a lot of 
crunch in mine, so we're gonna do two of them. And if you don't, you don't have to. I actually talked to somebody today who said that they freeze their celery ahead of time so it's a little mushy, but they like the flavor, they just don't like the crunch. So I thought that was interesting. So if you want to do it that way, you're welcome to do it that way. Um, you can also add um, celery seed if you'd rather just have the flavor. It takes quite a bit of that, but the leaves are fine to put in it. In fact, they, they're kind of pretty. There's a lot of flavor in the leaves, so if you want to do that, by all means, do that. Now I'm going to preheat the oven right now to 350 degrees. The trick is to let it get on a hot pan. Don't move it around a whole lot. Um, I like them caramelized. If you want to just saute them, that's fine. If you like them just dredged in butter with the extra crunch, if you like more raw onions, you can do that. This is really a versatile recipe. So like I said, it's pretty, pretty basic. Now, um, I'm going to give that a few minutes and add some pepper in there. I'm going to add some, this is uh, just chicken bouillon. I like the powdered kind. If you use this, don't worry about adding extra salt. I mean, or add it salt to taste. Don't, don't automatically add it in there because this has quite a bit of salt in it already. Um, but I'll show you why in a minute, what we're going to do when I do this. And I'd say that's probably mm, two tablespoons. Mm, I wish you guys could smell that. It smells really good. parsley to it. This is dried parsley. You can use fresh if you'd like. If you're using dried, this is part of the reason why I put it in here is because it's going to release all those um, flavors and the oils and stuff. If you add it in fresh, it's not really going to release as much. That's why sometimes lasagna and Italian foods taste better the second days because it gives it enough time for those flavors to, you know, mature and get out. We've got some Italian seasoning which has sage and rosemary and I think some oregano, but I really, really smell that. It's amazing. It smells so good. What the hell? Okay. There we go. Now we're cooking. Doesn't that smell good? Now, we're going to add the other half a stick. And I'm going to put in here come on, milk. Alright, I'm going to put in here some sage now. I happen to grow this one. I like it. It smells great. Wards off all the bad spirits, you know. Smells really good. But store bought's just fine. If you would rather do that and that's what you got, then do that. 
Um, mushrooms would be good in this too. I mean, this is this is something you can just go go wild with. You can do all sorts of things. Sausage, bacon, turkey, chicken. You can make this. Doesn't have to be for Thanksgiving. You can do do this any night of the week. Now I have done this up to this step before and then remelted my butter and added them in later, you can do that. You don't have to do them right, you know, right before you're going to cook it. Um, I've actually got it to this point right here and uh, cooked it, stuck it in a bowl, put it in the fridge, and then just melted it on back down again uh, before, I, before I stuck it in the oven. So either way, it's just fine. Because I added that... Um, that bouillon in it, I am going to add just a tiny, 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 the tiniest bit of water into this because oil and water don't mix too well, right? But we need it to cover all of our um, dressing. We don't want it to be too dry. I added probably, uh, I don't know, two or three tablespoons of water to it. Now it deglazed it, if you can see at the bottom. I don't have those little burn brown buttered marks anymore. That's a okay. That's what we like. And it smells amazing. Move that over here and this is this is actually so simple, you guys. It is just it's so delightful and so simple. Smells amazing, tastes amazing. I crave this every time I make it. I crave it afterwards. I just want more and more and more. We go through it very quickly at our house. I have a feeling you guys will too. And just give that a quick stir. See if you can coat that around as much as possible. And quickly as possible so that uh, it doesn't just mush in one spot because that's not good eats. But it is still edible. We, do, we still eat it because it's good. It's just not as purdy, if you get me. Okay. And there you have it. Into the oven it goes. I've got an oven started behind me at 350. And I'm going to stick it in there until it's as brown on the top as I like it. Probably about mm, 15 minutes, maybe 20. Depending on how your oven likes to run. And uh, then we're going to dig in. Alright, it is ready to come out. See how beautiful that is? Oh, it smells delicious too. Nice and golden and crispy on the top. Ready for eating.